Net present value is another one of our investment appraisal methods. We'll throw a link in the top left hand corner there to our other videos on the payback method of investment appraisal. ARR will be up there as well. This method's slightly different. It takes account of a couple of the criticisms of our other methods of investment appraisal, particularly that criticism of the ARR. RR. that the ARR assumes that a project can return money to an organization throughout its entire life and that money is as valuable to us if it was returned after three years or four years or five years as it would be if we had it right now and that's not true. People don't want to have to wait years for their money. In fact, money in the future is not even as valuable as that same amount of money would be if we had it in our hands right now. Imagine a million pounds. You could either have that right now sat in front of you as you're revising, or I could tell you that you've got to wait five years for your million pounds. Which would you rather? We all want to have that million pounds spread out in front of us right now, don't we? For two reasons. Number one, if we have a million pounds right now, we can invest it. We can set it to work and we can turn that million pounds into a greater amount. We can earn an interest on it. We can earn a return on it. So we want that money right now. We don't want to wait five years for it. We want to set it to work for us. The other reason why we want our money right now is because of inflation. If we have a million pounds, we can go out and spend that right now and buy a million pounds worth of goods and services and loveliness. If we wait five years, a million pounds won't buy us as much in the future as it would buy us right now. So we want our money earlier and the ARR doesn't take account of that fact. The net present value method does. So here's what we're going to have. We're going to have a little table that's going to set out the years that a project might run for. It's also going to set out the net returns of a project each year. The fact that this first one is in brackets indicates that this is the upfront or the initial cost of the project. But then we're going to have this extra column displaying what's known as a discount factor. What these discount factors are going to do is it's going to reduce the value of these net returns that a project is going to make for us. So this net return in year three of six million pounds, we're going to reduce it. We're going to make it less. And the reason why we're going to do that is because of the time value of money. Six million pounds in three years time is not as valuable as having six million pounds right now. We can't buy as much for six million pounds in three years time. It's not as valuable to us. And if we had it right now, we could set it to work and earn some interest on it. So we're going to discount how much these future net returns are. And we're going to recalculate how much that's really worth by today's standards of money. So here's how the net present value works. What we're going to do is we're going to take each of these net returns and we're going to take each of these discount factors and these will be given to you in the exam. Don't worry about how do I calculate these discount factors. Organizations will have analysts that will try and predict these discount factors for them. You're not getting examined on that bit. You're getting examined on calculating the NPV, the net present value. But we're going to take these net returns and we are going to multiply them by these discount factors to get a new figure, a new sum. And what we're going to do is we're going to add all of those sums together and it's going to give us what's called the net present value of an investment opportunity. It's going to tell us how much this product is really going to return by today's value of money. What we might even be able to do is to compare that to a target that the business has set if we're given it in the exam and see whether the net present value meets the business's target. So let's kick this off then. In year zero, we're going to invest in a project and it's going to cost us 12 million pounds. Now we're going to multiply that by a discount factor of one. That means we're not going to reduce that value. That's because we're spending that 12 million pounds up front right now, today. So 12 million pounds is actually worth. 12 million pounds today. So it's going to cost us that full amount. But if we move to the end of year one, we have got predictions or forecasts that this project would return to us 5 million pounds by the end of the first year. But that's in 12 months time. 
£5 million in a year's time is not as valuable as having £5 million right now in your bank account. So we're going to take that £5 million and we are going to multiply it by this discount factor of 0 0.95 to calculate a new total, to recalibrate it, if you like. And that will come out as 4.75 million. So although this project is going to return to us 5 million pounds by the end of the first year, that's only as valuable as having 4.75 million pounds right now, up front in your bank account. We're going to do the same with year two. We're going to take the £6 million we're predicting or forecasting it's going to make for us. We're going to multiply it by this discount factor of 0.91. And you'll see that this is a bigger discount factor this time. We're reducing it by an even bigger amount. And that's because waiting 24 months for your money is even less valuable than only waiting 12 months for your money. So we're going to multiply it by this greater discount factor here. And so we're going to recalibrate that six, that six million and say, well, it's only really worth 5.46 million by today's standards of money. We're going to do the same with year three. We've got 6 million again, but we're going to discount it even more this time. We'll multiply it by 0 0.86. Play along at home with your calculators if you've got them. 6 million times 0 0.86 is going to come out as 5.16 million pounds. So we're saying that by the end of year three, yeah, this project will have returned an extra six million pounds, but God, we've had to wait a full 36 months for that. That's not as valuable to us as even having that money after two years or one year, and certainly not as valuable as having that money right now up front. So we've discounted all of these different yearly net returns. And to work out the net present value, it's as simple as just adding these figures together. So we'll take our 4.75, we'll add on the 5.46, we'll add on the 5.16. Remembering, and here's the bit you don't want to forget, to also subtract that initial cost of 12 million pounds and it will leave you with a figure. In this instance, the figure is 3.37 million pounds. Now that is what's known as our net present value, our NPV. We've got a project here that's got an NPV of 3.37 million pounds. Now here's why that figure could be useful. We might be comparing it against other investments to seeing how it stacks up. And if this one has got the highest net present value, then if we're using MPV as our main criteria to select investments, this would be the one that we'd go for. If we've got a different project that we found has got a higher net present value, then we'd plump for that one and this one would get rejected. But this method of investment appraisal is also quite useful if you've got a target that you're aiming for. So for example, let's imagine the organisation has set itself the target of only investing in projects that have got a net present value of at least £4 million. Now with this project, when we first added up the net returns, we might get excited there. We think, oh, we've cracked it. We've got a project here. It's going to get a total return of £5 million. So we've added the five, the six, the six together, taken away the initial cost. We've got a £5 million project on our hands here. Let's invest in it. But be a bit reflective. If we just slow down and think, hold on a second. We've got to discount these values here because, you know, £6 million in three years isn't really the same as having six million pounds right now. And when we throw in those discount factors and we calculate the net present value, we find that a scheme that on the face of it looked good doesn't actually meet our criteria, doesn't actually meet our investment target. We thought it was going to make us five million pounds. We thought we we're in the winner's enclosure. But when we discount those uh, net returns and add them all together, we come up short. This time we've only got a project that makes us 3.37 million pounds by today's value of money. Now the net present value is a good methods investment appraisal because it does take account of time. It factors time into our returns. But one of the things that perhaps is critical of it lies in these discount factors. Accurately predicting how much money will be worth in a year's time or two or three, four, five years time. It's a complicated process. Businesses are at the mercy of the external environment. Inflation rates fluctuate over time. Knowing exactly how much to discount your net returns by 
it's a bit of a gamble, it's a bit of a lottery. There's a little bit of guesswork involved there, even if the business has the best financial analysts plugging these figures away behind the scenes. So we might find that we reject a project because it doesn't meet our investment criteria, but that's because the discount factors that we've used here aren't actually accurate or aren't actually apt. So we could end up rejecting projects that might actually have been profitable for the organization or meet our investment criteria. So that's, uh, that's one criticism of it, but it is at least a method that does take into account the full years of a project's life. Remember the payback method didn't do that. And it also takes account of the fact that money earned to us earlier is of more value than the same amount if it's earned later on. And the ARR method didn't do that. Good luck with your revision. We'll see you soon for some more tutorials. Keep on taking the beers.